Do you hear that? I've heard it. Voices in the hundreds of thousands screaming in a chorus together. How do we paint tiny cars? I have heard your questions, and today I have some answers. Hello everybody, you can see the tiny little machine behind me. Micro Machines. Do you remember those from the early 90s, late 80s, the series of tiny toy cars? They kind of did nothing, um, but man, they were cool to look at, much like miniatures. They kind of roll around, you can wind them up, they shoot across the floor, some of them light up. A lot of designs, but this, this came back to me randomly, remembering the existence of Micro Machines. And it gave me, I started looking around on, on eBay and I found a little pack and ordered them and yeah, just I, I started to get ideas, you know, it's just a small scale car, it's kind of a quick and easy modeling opportunity, you can paint it up like a hot rod, etc. So this whole idea started coming together, I guess I'll call it sky high, but yeah, this little kind of rocket shaped car just demanded that I attach a smoky plume and have it like jetting through the sky. I don't know, it's it's fun. It just conjured a lot of uh, cartoonish images and, you know, working on a variety of subjects can pull out a variety of creations from the artist and make you think in new ways and make things that you didn't know you could make. So yeah, I had a lot of fun on this one and leaned in, really leaned into the animated aspect. And I, I wanted to create more of a vaporwave color palette, something very bright, beautiful, and vibrant. Sure. And most definitely something fast. So, that's where I'm at. Let's get into it. We're going to start with some circles. Everything in life is a circle. I want to wet blend some deep yellow and orange together. Uh, kind of keeping the orange, the slightly darker color, down in the lower quadrant. You know, as the car is propelled forward, I want the sky to be getting brighter, you know, it's kind of heading into the brightness and we can leave the darkness behind it. And there's a very soft fading of shadows towards the rear of this, but allow some brush strokes on this. You can see me just kind of dancing around, pulling and playing with the, like, once I, I start wet blending, um, the colors, they, they begin to dry and they get to this sort of tacky state and they're much more receptive to these brush strokes or small additions, you know, I'm trying to create a lot of variation and the sky is kind of limitless. Um, yeah, I'll, just, I'll throw a few puffy little white clouds in there, kind of trail them off as you have the option to make everything look like it's streaking past in the background. You know, I, I want a touch of that, but I don't know if I can go full on like speed lines, anime style for the backdrop, but yeah, there we have it, just a nice yellow slice. And I also want to say that I tried airbrushing this. I airbrushed it once, I airbrushed it again, and every time I got into the, the violet tones I wanted to add, I screwed it up somehow. So I wasted two hours airbrushing this, right? The wet blended backdrop you see, 7 minutes and 17 seconds of total time. I know this because I can see that when I'm recording on my camera. It was frustrating, but moments like this, it led to the result that I have. Sure, I wish if I would have had a better idea sooner, I wish the airbrush would have worked, but I'm happy with what I got, and I, I guess that's uh, that's part of the process. Um, so yeah, we have we have this kind of day and night thing going on. You know, I want to create a bit of a universe nightscape as well round and round, sky high, night and day, you know. So yeah, just back down to more stress relieving wet blending. It's starting off with a base of black and dark Prussian blue. And then I started wet blending some hot pink and cyan into that. I got this color verdigris, verdigris from uh, Vallejo Game Color. Really not good at saying that word, but it's cyan. It's just a very light cyan. And yeah, this hot pink is a fluorescent tone. I, I got some of these Army Painter fluorescent air paints recently. And yeah, I was dancing around with those, kind of throwing them into the into the yellow backdrop to make that brighter as well. But you can see I'm using one of their, their dry brushes to sort of lift and stipple and create that kind of 
hot pink magenta universal milkshake. The, the swirling of the cosmos. Really done well with a tiny dry brush. I also found some space for tiny little dots. I'll keep those to that, that very light cyan tone as well. You know, just some stars speckling out there in the cosmos. Just add them, add them as you see fit, but uh, try to leave a little tension and release. You know, we want kind of clusters and then the absence of clusters. I couldn't resist the addition of a comet trailing through the sky, of course, and that's another way to add to this just forward motion, the fastness, you know. All these, all these little uh, ingredients that kind of help sell the feeling and the narrative of this piece. Hey look, there's the smoke. I'm just going to airbrush that with some light grays for now. Nothing exciting. Just remember that as the uh, comet tail kind of dips and curls around into the, the structure that's supporting it, etc. Just have that becoming darker, generally. It's going to be a little exercise in volume control, but bright and light at the source of the flame, black as we get down into the uh, further distance. Wow, that's a sentence. Really just doing a lot of housework. I just want to get everything out of the way so I can finally get to the car. So let's talk about the rock. I'll be wet blending German camel, black brown, dark Prussian blue, and flat earth. See what I did there? Then a touch of orange where the stones meet the backdrop. You know, I, I could go crazy projecting orange light across the entire side of this car. Um, I don't know that that's entirely necessary, but a little bit as the orange light crests over the stones. I did a little bit of dry brushing. I took some buff, added it into the flat earth just to make a lighter take. I took some um, mid-tone and blue tone from the Army Painter Mix a little bit of that German camel black brown into it. Made myself a wash. You know, keeping the mid tone in the the exposed areas, and then bringing the blue into those downward facing angles, those shadow areas. You know, just adding a little bit of tone to the darkness. Then it was time for some hot ass fault. The pavement, warm gray blended into dark Prussian blue once again. Uh, warm gray. I'm, I'm using a medium flesh tone and just combining black and white to make a variety of grays. Medium flesh tone fills the yellow ochre variety for me. Um, so yeah, just increasing amounts of that, you know, as you reach up towards the peak of this little road, things will be brighter, things will be warmer, and then as the curve goes back towards the rear of the piece, I want to include more of that dark Prussian blue. I also wanted to add some indication of rule and law into this, so a thin white line down the middle of the road. Um, you know, again, leaning into the kind of colder backside, warmer front side. But this was made with uh, just a piece of masking tape. I had, to slight, you know, I had to slice it with a slight arc and then just move it apart ever so slightly, taking a nubbed up brush, just kind of stippling things in place. I, fi yeah, I find that like road paint is, is very thick and chunky anyways, you know, it's made to stand up in all kinds of weather, so stippling that up gives me a little bit of uh, material variety. It looks right. Nice little detailed touch, but yeah, nothing nothing too crazy to that. Just a stippled white line down the middle of the road. All right, back to the smoke cloud. This was a very exciting and fun opportunity. You know, creating something with smoke with an internal illuminated glow is a tricky effect to pull off. It's you know, much like painting flame, you have to get this internal glow and it feels like you're highlighting in reverse. You know, now I, I have this reverse highlighting to achieve an internal brightness, and I have the external highlighting of the areas where the smoke is completely taken over, and then it becomes darker and darker as that comet tail trails off. It's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, it's just, I was just using mixtures of gray, just black and white to taste, keeping all the shadows facing away from the thruster. Um, you know, take you can combine a little bit of gray and orange. It can be tricky when you're trying to figure out your like OSL color. You, you know, sometimes you might think like, I have a purple object with red light on it, so I'll mix a little bit of red into the purple. You know, this could make uh, more of a dull color than you expect. So sometimes uh, glazing the light just straight on top of the surface and just building it up slowly is how I like to go. But anyway, this worked out. There was some harmony here, so just orange and gray together as it leads to that, that yellow brightness. 
You want to work very gradually on this though. You know, your, your goal is saturation and mid-tones, very strong mids. Um, you know, it's, it's not going to be very dark. Light is light. Flame doesn't have a lot of dark areas on it, so concentrate on saturation so everything looks vibrant and matches the rest of the environment. It doesn't have to be as contrasted. You know, it'll come off with a much brighter look than everything else. This is good. Just be aware. I could add tiny dots here and there. Maybe there's, you know, some sparks or something flying through. Maybe, maybe the whole engine is about to explode, killing the driver. Who knows? Imagination is a fun place to play. Um, but yeah, leaning into that stylish, cartoony, more animated look, the smoke gave me a chance to kind of draw the smoke on top of what I had sculpted, you know. So just trying to get a little uh, style points in there. I didn't go for absolute smoothness here and there, but just a... Uh, a very gradual progression of colors, you know, very slight variety. They all kind of harmonize nicely and we get these cool kind of swirling lines, almost like oil and water, which, you know, works well for thruster smoke. But just remember to keep everything in balance. Sometimes you might want to hold a piece at a distance, at an arm's length, so you can see those, you know, the larger movements. I really wanted to stay fixated on that shadow, on that, that plume of smoke becoming darker because I also don't want people to notice that part. <laughs> you know, I want it to dip into darkness, I don't want you to forget about it. Alright, finally the fun part, the dessert of the project. The main feature, I guess we're always just eating in order to get to the cake by that description. It's time to paint the car. Uh, so I started off with a mixture of light green and emerald from Vallejo Model Color. Just getting a nice solid base coat. I just lay that down with the brush. I'm not going to risk clogging up my airbrush for something that I'm not even going to blend and it's so small so I'm not really saving a lot of time you know massively base coating things so yeah. Following that though I did pull out the airbrush and I started to I took that same mixture adding a little bit of cyan um, holding the car at an angle you know it's when it's when it's attached to that smoke, finally it's going to be at a slight angle. Many thin layers are applied with the airbrush. You know, just gradually leading the eye forward. Again, there's, there's that slight drop of shadow towards the rear. I want to create this forward momentum. But yeah, just lifting it up gradually with small touches of cyan. Then I took a tour. I mean, I have all these colors laid out on my palette, and I know all the techniques to apply to enhance this thing, right? So I. I want to go down, laying, laying some dark lining in place, taking some of that dark Prussian blue and emerald and just slicing it in there, bumping up some of the edge highlights as well. Um, and even your edge highlights can be a gradient. So, you know, just very small mixtures, even if it is just a line, I had some peaks to build up to. The cock pit was base coated with violet red. I don't use this color very often. I, I went on this quest trying to find a nice Re replacement red for cotta red base through Vallejo and I bought like six reds and still never found one and just used cotta red base. But I have this violet red. Um, so yeah, I was, I was taking that and adding a hot pink from the, the airbrush line into it to brighten, you know, hot pink up to white, dark brush and blue once again into black to shade down. You also have another chance to lean into the animated look. Uh, stylishly illustrated cockpit makes the whole situation look faster. And yeah, all those kind of greasy gleams. Normally I would, I would approach this like a transparent gemstone and have a lot of the brightness kind of accumulating in the, the bottom corner of the cockpit. But I don't know, I just had something a little bit different in mind today. You know, I, I wanted the reflection to hit more broadly on the, the upper part of the... I thought it just kind of added to the, the sunny, bright, daylight look. I don't know. Who knows? Why does anyone do anything? You can call me Eric Swinson, because I'm about to lay down a drop shadow. Uh, <laughs> so I, I held this model under a single lamp to just kind of give me an indication. I have a lot of freedom with this drop shadow, though. It's a cartoon, right? It could just be a simple circle. I could draw, you know, a really just bad, like, car outline on the bottom, so... I went for the bad car outline just and just kind of pulled it into the shadow, you know, as it arcs over and we fall off into the depths, the shadow just kind of combines with those those uh, darker tones. But yeah, right underneath the model, you can see where that shadow comes into play. 
So always, uh, I like to examine things under a lamp like that, and it'll give me an idea of what the light is telling me. Um, but as always, bend the rules. You know, there is there is no law in artwork. There are only suggestions. You can do whatever you feel. And now, no smoothly blended model is complete without interruptions. Add a little bit of battle damage. I figure that it's this car is going to catch some snags. It's uh, you know kind of risking it all, going around all these breakneck turns and sidewinder screw jobs. So yeah, a little bit of scratching up towards the front, just with some some black, and then highlighting the lower edge with that cyan again. A few little dings and dots, some superficial scratches. Um, and yeah, also just a thin glaze of flat earth. I don't want the car to look like a dirty pile of filth, but it is in action. So just glazing a little bit of thinned down flat earth to the base of the fenders, get a little bit of that dusty look. And there it is, sort of. I, uh, I painted some of this model on Twitch as well. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a, a tight week for me. I'm going to a metal fest over the weekend, but I don't think people tuned into this video to figure out how to f paint the hubcaps. I'm sure there's one person who did, but yeah, the hubcaps, the little red lightning bolts, I'm sorry. They're up on Twitch. Who cares? Um, <laughs> this was a fun project. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. It really, like, pulled something different out of me, and I, f I feel... Like, I, I crossed some kind of bridge here. I went from miniature painter to toy artist. Like, I could see someone producing this who has never heard the word Warhammer before. At least not in gaming terms. And maybe. But yeah, it was just, it felt really good. You know, this there's no kit telling me to make this model. This is, you know, some castaway, half-rusted toy from, you know, 30 years ago. Uh, but as I was talking about these castaway, half-used, rusty toys from 30 years ago on Twitch, someone saw that I was, I was working on this project and said, well, I just packed up a bunch of Micro Machines the other day and was about to go and donate them. You want to take a look at them? I was like, sure. So now I am in possession of over 100 Micro Machines. And there are small, there are little boats, there's construction equipment, um... It's inspired me to work in a series. Um, so I'm going to make a few more Micro Machine pieces going forward. I'd like to make a small tugboat suspended in water. That'll be a very difficult and rewarding water pour. Um, I'd like to do, the next one I want to do is with some forced perspective. Take a look at this car here. You may think that it's just a tiny car, but in fact inside of this car is the now smallest car you have ever seen. So this, <laughs> the Micro Machine Insiders, uh, an even tinier car, but this gives me a chance to work with some forced perspective, right? If I have the regular sized car running along the top of the ridge and the smaller car along the lower part of the ridge with smaller stones, you get a little bit of a cool forced perspective action. So as always, everything gives me like 10 ideas and I make one of them. We'll see what I get around to, but I want to come back to this series. There's so many other things I want to paint. You know, I'm not going to do tiny little cars for the rest of my life. I could, though, because I do have a lot of Micro Machines. Thank you, Thunder Buckus. I really appreciate that. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it inspires you. Um, look forward to more of this. I'm, I'm going to be spreading these out among my friends, too. I, I feel like this is a good thing. I want to, I'd like to see more people... Uh, creating their own little projects like this. But, as always, I could keep talking, but I'll run out of space. So, until the next time, remain unchained, and thank you very much for all of your love and support. Cheers.